In your campaigns, does conquering Florence end up with a gigantic coalition? Because you overpaid for it? In today's guide, I'll show you how to combine this mechanic with a few others so that you never overpay for Florence again. And this is not magic, but probably the best way to create the kingdom of gold on earth. Hello guys, Lucas here. PayPal State is one of the more difficult Italian countries, but beware, not because it's hard to play, but you have to do so many things with it at the start that you will surely forget something. The first one is the alliance with the Austrian Emperor. We want him, because as soon as we improve our relationship, we want to join the Holy Roman Empire. Another thing is building a spy network on Aragorn. Aragorn! Just in case, we may need some territorial claims on Napol or other provinces related to it. As soon as this country breaks free, we want to attack it, and therefore we have to keep one rival slot for this country. The second slot should go to Florence by default, but again, just before declaring war on them. And the same with Provence. So you're right, I don't choose any rival at the moment. We need to improve relations with France and build a spy network in Siena, because it may be one of our first targets to conquer, because there are glass here. So you know, I'm going to try to introduce faceting here. Isn't there any other province that would meet the conditions? I don't think so. Well, unless you want to conquer Venice. States, here we have 50% crown land, which is a great deal. Because we can easily choose monarchy points to start after each point. As for Claire, we're taking the cheaper advisor. And that's it for now. In the nobility, we do not exceptionally start with supremacy over the crown or the papacy. We use a strong duchess and nobility integration policy because we start with two vassals and we want to integrate them as soon as possible. So both of these privileges will disappear on their own in about 10 years. We take a loan from the burghers. We will need it on start. Cheaper advisors, whom I don't took from the nobility, so I'll take them there too. And I also want a merchant navy privilege. Private merchant fleet. Finally, we sell the land and collect it. I usually recruit the military and hunt for a cheaper advisor, and I found one. As for our advisors, we start with the third level 50% off Leon Battista Alberti. I'm sure I've misread his name. We want to recruit him anyway? He's super cheap after all. We take a diplomatic advisor to trade because he will pay for himself. At the top we also have a diplomatic reputation and improving relations. If we need any of them I will of course replace him. And we know that the military one will be cheaper in a moment then we'll take it. Now let's get to the papacy because that's very important what we're going to do here. As we have four provinces that are not our capital. Then we can buy three cardinals from what I know. Each next one is more expensive and gives us corruption. Well, but thanks to this, we will always generate for each cardinal half a papal influence point per year. That's a lot. Another thing is that in the actions of the papacy, we make a point cardinal. And we want to give them to our vassals. Only I don't have a diplomat. So I'll do it as soon as they get back, which is basically back. As for our fleet here, I separate transports from it. Rather, they should not be useful to us. So I divide them into such stacks one at a time and I will be selling them to all the countries around me in a moment. What we need as a papacy, galleys and actually two heavy ships and trade ships for trade. But for now, let's build galleys. And uh, actually, as far as the papacy, when we control it, we have really powerful bonuses. Cheaper advisors, less aggressive expansion and cheaper technology, very strong bonuses. Therefore, as a PayPal state, we always have the best possible chance of being the next Pope. And if you do it right, it's really hard to get you off the Peter's throne. And I think I've done everything. Wait, I need to look at my checklist. But if I forgot something, let me know in the comments. And all in all, our further gameplay will look super non-standard as well as standard at the same time. Because I want to move the papacy to Mexico. But before that, I intend to create the kingdom of God on Earth. This is probably the best way because we have some provinces to conquer. Advisor for 0.18 gold, incredibly cheap. The Papal Bull, wow. We're not going to use anything at all. But if we already have institutions in 6, 7 years, maybe we'll take it. Normally, later on, I'll rather take the development cost. A cardinal for you, remember that the Curia should pay, otherwise it will go out of your purse. Oh, I can't send cardinal to Perugia? Why? <laughs> Attention! Don't assign cardinals in the country you want to conquer, you get 5 years of peace. I'm sending an insulting message to Naples. I'm doing a ship sail campaign. And now we are improving relations with Holy Roman Empire Emperor until we can join this empire. It shouldn't take us long. Ooh, even loans I can afford to pay back. Now we have to wait until this ruler dies. Then Aragon will lose his power over Naples usually. And what will Naples decide? Will we attack it or will we attack it? Because we will attack him either for the province or for him to become our vassal. Oh, because my hopeless Pope just has a very nice personality? Okay, we're joining the Empire. And attention, it is very important that you know about it. We are attached to the rank of the Kingdom as the Papacy and always will be. In the moment when we create the Kingdom of God, 
we will be attached to the rank of the Empire. Well, yes, you know, uh, everything is clear and logical. So joining to the Holy Roman Empire does not lower your rank to a duchy. So sometimes it's worth checking in here on that first tier of yours. Doesn't your special reform of government say, fix two? And joining the empire just gives us the ability to attack all these Italian countries without drawing the emperor into battle against us. As long as we have a territorial claim, of course. Besides, the emperor always protects us. Yes, I know I'm overpaying, but believe me, I'd forget about those cheaper advisors if I hadn't established them right from the start. I just know myself. The army is paying up, and that means we're about to have the first war. We're giving the cardinal to Lithuania, which allows us to complete a basically useless mission. Because it doesn't even work for Lithuania right now. But after Lithuania, we can start to improve relations with this Swiss. We can do a much better job here. We attack Siena. Especially since I'm lucky and they only have an alliance with Ulm. But as you can see, I'm in the second war. Yes, I also got an alliance with France. It worked. Rather, we want to delay the reformation, don't we? We are improving relations with our vassals. We just want to integrate them as soon as possible. And we're also doing a mission for the Swiss Guard. Wow. Since when does it not cost professionalism in employment? And they're even cheap. The worst thing is to get to this Ulmu now. How many ways do I have to go through them here? They don't even have an army here. But suddenly it appeared. What is it? Seriously, he wasn't here a moment ago. And suddenly he appeared. And Siena falls into our hands. Unfortunately, I have bad luck with Florence. They found out my spy. All in all, the alliance with Castile temporary will be useful to us. The power of Catholics. Catholics of all countries. Unite. Siena is super important to us. We will want to have face sighting here. Therefore, we will also develop this province. It is worth investing in infrastructure. Although this province really only needs 15 development points. After all, it will be nice to increase your diplomatic points later. But then, will the vassalization event on Neapol happen if these rebels win? Interesting all in all. Unfortunately, we won't know. We don't really want to take this technology forward. In the meantime, I'm also transferring one merchant from Valencia, no, from Alexandria, to Genoa. Or you can go to Venice just to launch a trade policy that improves relations. This means that our aggressive expansion is declining faster. Renaissance for me. The happy campaign is getting ready, I guess. Have you ever had a renaissance at your place? At the same time, we can take our first government reform. I don't know why many guides advise taking this manpower, but 10% of the poop is still 10% of the poop. And why don't they take an extra merchant? This is the most useful thing here. I mean, it wasn't uh, when I go colonizing, I'll take this. The mission of civilization. But for now, I'm not going colonizing yet. So I'm taking an extra merchant. And I even know where to send it. How long does France want to fight this war? Because I would like to finish it. Time to decorate the Sistine Chapel. Hard choice, really hard choice. If I were to conquer the world, I would consider between national unrest minus one and missionary strength plus 1%. These are two very strong modifiers useful when conquering the world. Here we may care in this campaign about reducing the rapid aggressive expansion. And prestige years with an option we just discard is weak. However, I will want to convert the place where we are going as soon as possible. In a while. By the way, we can already build the Vatican Library. And again, for World Conquest National Unrest minus 2, a very strong modifier. A diplomatic reputation? Not necessarily. Or for PvP Army Tradition from Battles, plus 50% is plenty. Uh, let's go get better generals. But for the conquest of the world, I advise you, without question. And of course we need prestige. By the way, uh, why are you still alive? Of course remember that knowledge must be shared, preferably for money. Who will give the most? Well, unfortunately, we can only sell our knowledge to the Emperor. What's going on in these Balkans? Educating the poor. And who will give money for it? No. We have an opportunity to excommunicate Provence. What are we actually doing right now? I don't remember excommunicating Lorraine. Oh, because it's two in one. I forgot. As I can't wait for Naples, seriously for a long time, then we do my plan B. We attack Provence with Castile. We do not summon Florence separately. I will use her for something else. Come here, Venice. Florence, I means. Oh my god, I forgot to start integrating the vassals. I really didn't kick the cavalry out of the army? Let's fix this error. Let's tempt Florence and take the money too. Faceting has finally arrived. Okay. I'm hoping Provence will disappear from the map and no one will vassalize it. But bots don't vassalize, do they? And now I'm now introducing the fifth technology. Because I want to speed up my first idea group. <laughs> we got it, Provence. We will lead our vassals quickly. We ate vassals, so it's time to release Provence. But let's just not play it. Provence has a very powerful mission. A claim of King René. Either way, you read it. When they have 100 development points, they get territorial claims for all of Naples and possibly Sicily. In the sense of not even claims, but hot national core? So we can recapture all of Naples for 25% aggressive expansion. 
and then we eat Provence, of course. Naples' event finally came, but unfortunately, Naples decided to pay off its debts. But that they can't be our rival? I was surprised. Yet they can, and they bought it right away. No. At least let's take Naples. Goodbye, Naples army. And here I will tell you honestly. I recommend, as usual, diplomatic and humanistic ones to create the kingdom of God very quickly. I did it this way. 1485, I had the kingdom of God created. If you planned to go to the colonies right away, that is, instead of sitting here, we would already have conquered Grenada, which still exists. And then, of course, then we go colonized. You know, exploration ideas, expansion in that order, and we're having fun. But since I chose Kingdom of Gold, we're going spy ideas. I wonder if you can guess what I will choose to pair with them. And I'm choose spy ideas because we have here, first of all, cheaper making territorial claims. But on the second level, uh, minus 20% aggressive expansion. As the papacy, we have minus 10%. Cheaper making territorial claims again, minus 25%. So the idea of espionage fits very well into this. After all, someone once said that the confessional system is the best spy system in the world. Well, in this era, we can still have an additional 10% justify my war, which, as you know, gives us minus 50% to aggressive expansion. Within two years, we will have a second expansion. Oh no, the Italian states came out of the Holy Roman Empire. Someone would have expected that. We stay for a simple reason, as long as Austria is our emperor, we do not suffer any penalties on this account. And we have a really big piece of these Italian countries to conquer. Ah, the army on Neopole shattered a second time. Just a little too fast. We take it for us. Okay, and we're taking the following territories for us. For 43 points of aggressive expansion, but it is survivable. I'm taking everything that belongs to Genoa's trade region. He's still alive. I don't get it. What bad luck I have? This is something new for me. Excommunica works on our territorial claims. Not only those provinces with which we border directly. It's strong. 10,000 hours and I'm still learning this game. Really? It is very important when playing Genoese trade to upgrade all our trade centers. And regardless of whether we will build marketplaces here or first expand them to the second level, investing in infrastructure is also very useful. This Pope is breaking records. Anyone ever had an older one? At last, admittedly, very average, but finally, we can further reduce claims costs. These spy ideas for the Pope is a really amazing thing. To be honest, I even want to finish them as soon as possible then. On the Pope, never take this reform on the third level. Never! That is until reform 8 where you can see the stats of your successor. Okay, I really need to do some theocracy for the colonies. That's why I'm taking this mission to cheaper advisors now. We are building a flagship, standard perks. Unfortunately, the papacy has no special ones. We get help from our holy orders, and it was useful for me to discover Ethiopia now. When I finally have developed ports and marketplaces, I have ports to at least the second level. We can safely fire up the privilege for increased trade power in provinces. Before that, it is unprofitable. Literally three more gold from trading. All in all, I'm probably most interested in delaying the reformation right now. So remember, we don't use this button. This accelerates, contrary to appearances, the reformation. Ooh, I need to give away some cardinals. If you want a cardinal, leave a like under this video. Do you also think that there should be a number here informing you how many cardinals does a country already have? Evil Florence excommunica works. We attack. Rather, without the help of Austria. The Florentine army scattered before us. The first chose from the era, and here are two very important ones for us to choose from. First, less aggressive expansion. Minus 10 aggressive expansion on everything. That's a lot. The second, then super important for us, is the transfer subject, because it allows us to make claims alongside our claims. So when I have the entire Venetian coast already claimed together, then if I take it, then I can now do every province deep into the claim as well. It tempts me. And I think I will, because it will work better for us with Excommunica. All of Florence for 16 aggressive expansion, wow. Theocracy is also one of those few governments where it really pays to develop churches, because we have quite a big bonus to taxes. 25%, always something. And time for a war with excommunicated Venice, where my goal will be to capture Venice. And for now, without the emperor, because he has territorial claims to these territories. Cheaper advisors again, oh my god, but it's strong for us. From Genoa, I only take Corsica plus money. I know that Genoa is a very important place for trade, but we'll take it in the next war. We drive Venice from our borders. Wow, how did I hit them so hard? Let's fire a fort at Treviso. And my fleet drove out the Venetian, which is afraid of me. As if something we do not call Corsica, and we will give it to Provence after this war. I will give you Venice to come to my capital. I will give you... This is amazing. Normally something like this should result in a gigantic coalition for us. And this nobody cares. What happened here? 
and so the papacy became one of the strongest countries in the world. And since I really miss administrative points, diplomatic ones too, for us, I take only Venice. And we have a pretty nice monument here, it's worth having. And I release Aquilia as vassal and I will give it all other provinces. For favor points, I'm reclaims a province for Provence. I don't know if it will cost me an alliance with France. The Burgundian succession and all of Burgundy went to the Pilatinate. And now Provence is about to complete this mission so we can recapture the rest of Naples for them, the less worthy. But our wealth is growing, and very much so. All in all, maybe I'll be able to afford even better advisors soon. We catch another little Italian vassal and another. We attack Naples in order to recapture the national provinces of Provence, of course. And Naples disappears. And we're going into a war of Aragon's excommunication. This is amazing. Ooh, but I don't have any transporters. Oops. Well, Aragon is putting up a fierce resistance to our fleet, but I think we're winning. Well, let's eat this Aragon a bit. Okay, we're only adding Sicily and Corsica to us. Although Corsica might go for Provence, but I can't pass it on. No, Provence is super expensive. We won't annex it for now, so I'm making it in March. And let me tell you, the fourth level of reforms is where I always have a problem. Is more money, 30% taxi, that's quite a lot for now. But is it faster to conquer? Okay, imperialists like to conquer. Now we need 500 gold to be a defender of the faith. Anyone have it? We are blessed. Uh, the second idea I'm going to pair, and I'll tell you honestly, here I was wondering whether to take expansive ideas now and just hit the colonies right now, because we are very close to creating the kingdom of God. But uh, unfortunately, I'm still missing a very large amount of admin points. That's why I'm taking what I had planned. That is divine ideas. They are incredibly strong. Look, siege ability plus 20%. We get to the pair. And um, besides development, many other cool bonuses. A change of culture, a more stable country, it looks very interesting. And a manpower in true fate provinces. It is very strong in theocracies. Well, because then we can of course scale it with this and a few other government reforms. Genoa disappears, but what about province? Because you fool didn't remember to get back into trade updating after turning into a Marche. Don't forget it like me. And it's looking better and better in Genoa 82%, in Venice 45%. But we make money. Hey, we're really making money. Wow. Ah, uh, Aragon, Aragon, excommunica! If anyone is interested in how I develop the economy, I make production buildings on everything that is not these goods. And basically, as you can see, I built everywhere I could. Because these goods will go to me to generate manpower. I guess, no, it will. You may notice that even though I already have 8 military tech, I don't use cannons at all. That's because basically most of the fortes are waterfront here. Coastal? Never mind. And basically I only use the siege fleet. Or firing. I conquer everything that you see here. I left only territories to conquer for these two vassals. And I take one province in Africa. Attention, one and only one, not more. And now we are fighting two, probably the last wars really. First with Milan. I need to call France to this war because unfortunately she suddenly made an alliance with Savoy. And we don't want that. And the second war where we need provinces, Savoy, for us, more specifically this province, as France is already fighting for us in one war. It cannot stand against us in another war. Simple trick, right? And I have to admit that playing with spy ideas is the most enjoyable papacy campaign I've ever played. Ever. Really. Birth of colonialism. Did someone say, province with gold? We're launching a privilege for faster siege. We don't like it here anymore. Milan disappears from the maps. Uh, how even? Alright, we'll wait with the Savoy. And yes, France will not join the war against us now. Even though he still has an alliance with the Savoy. Because Savoy loses miserably. When you have over 30% that you win, and they lose, their allies no longer join wars. Seriously? Why do I need CB for Savoy now? They are under my occupation anyway. Oh! But I haven't upgraded yet. So we take a lots of loans, okay? I got heavily in debt, really hard, but maybe it will be worth it. Ha! Works! We only have 5,000 gold left to pay off. Taxes for the church, because we need money and we need it badly. And in total, this reduces the cost of the idea by 10%. Too bad I didn't have it earlier. Well, let's eat Savoy. The coalition will not be large. As long as it's going to happen at all. Yes, we beat Italian cities. Sweet the poor, what? What does it mean? Italian supremacy, all conquered. I just too much a bit. How many cultures to accept? Yes, I completely forgot about them, but we get them for free anyway. Let me know in the comments because unfortunately Wikipedia is down. Are there any events for the expansion of monuments in the area? What I will do now. As you can see, I'm making a spy network for Portugal. And actually, I can also do Castile because we don't get relationship penalties. Because we have the spy idea. At least, that's how I understand it. Where was it done? Simply. I'm stealing maps from them now. We have discovered a new world. 
as if I had to sail one ship right to the border. So I can steal those maps. Stupid mechanics, but unfortunately, it's necessary. Next level is 5. There are some nice reforms here. If we plan to convert the world to one culture, this reform is a must-have. Reducing passive corruption can also be very useful. Or if we want to earn more. Let's invest in the production of wine, which is fine for Italy. That's why I take it. 5 gold more. Nice. Inflation is booming. But now I just have to wait for my vassals to eat and we create the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. All men under the god. Well, we definitely want this unique form of government more. We get monarchy, administration, skill, plus two. This is a mega powerful modifier. Manpower in true faith provinces plus 15%. A lot. And overall morale. And our rulers will always have such an educational perk now that we will be able to choose whether they want an additional administrative military diplomatic point. Unless you don't want it and prefer 10% prestige. And I know I'm going to need some very administrative points, so we'll focus on them with my successor. We've now got a very powerful form of government. Head of the Catholic? No, Kingdom of God. Oh, that's it. We have changed. Oh, this is where we can no longer change our reforms. Why? And I would like to say that we have an epic inscription, but it's almost invisible. Well, now we have an empire rank. All cultures become acceptable to us. This should greatly improve our economy. Well, always something. Well, now it's time to go for the gold. In anticipation of the second episode from the papacy, in which I move our capital to the new world, I invite you to watch this episode from Moldova, where I created the mighty Romania, and it shows you how to get a certain rare achievement.